Welcome and thank you for joining us today for Perfecting Kingdom Living, where you'll hear the word you need to live a prosperous kingdom lifestyle here on earth. Now, Damaris Johnson. Yes, welcome to Perfecting Kingdom Living. I am your host, Damaris Johnson, and it is a pleasure. It's a pleasure to come to you uh, once again with a word, with a word, a word that pertains to the righteousness that God has imparted unto the earth and to his people, a word that pertains to the kingdom of God, a word that will deal with every situation, every situation that you encounter. Father God has a word, has a word that can speak directly to you that will help you come out of that situation. You can't look at nobody else's situation. You have to look at your situation and go to Father for yourself and, and, and get a word. Uh, I, I want to thank you for tuning in in this Passover season. Uh, I know, I know. We call it Easter. Some call it Easter, uh, but but really, it's a Passover season. It's it's a time where Father has appointed to meet with those who will call upon His name in faith, believing that He is Lord. He has appointed this season. You can go all the way back to the Book of Exodus uh, when Father was dealing with the nation of Israel and and bringing them forth out of the bondage of Egypt. He established three days by which He had appointed that He will come down and meet with his people. And during those seasons, because it wasn't just a one day event, there were seasons, there were week long events, there were, uh, they would last a few days, there were celebrations that would go on, uh, and, and, and Father would do miraculous things in those seasons. So, so, so we, wanna, we wanna deal with some of those things that uh, bring out the importance of, of celebrating and acknowledging, Lord, this is your appointed time for you to come and meet with me. I need you to come and sit with me and sup with me and talk to me about what I need to do to be the person you've already died for me to be. And then sit there and, and, and wait and allow Father to speak to your heart. And he'll lead you and he'll show you uh, exactly what it is you want to do. So we want to get into some things that bring out uh, the power of, of the Passover and what we call Resurrection Sunday. We just talked this past Sunday about the power of resurrection and what it means. What it means that Jesus Christ was resurrected. What it means, what it says to me, uh, what, what, is, what does it mean as far as, as it relates to my sins being forgiven? And what does that, that brings me into a whole new standing, a whole new expectation, a whole new hope. The hopelessness that abounds in our city, in our streets today, the hopelessness that abounds across uh, the region of Western New York is due to a lack of understanding that our sins are forgiven, that we are no longer under the curse if we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord, that we are no longer uh, uh, having an expectation of negativity happening in our life. But knowing that you're forgiven, and forgiven of your sins, man, it brings about a whole new being, a whole new person, a whole new excitement, a whole new expectation. We want to get into some of those things. But uh, as we always do, as we always do before I get going, uh, it is important for you to follow along with me in the scripture. So I want you to get your Bible. Uh, I have my dear brother, Brother Allen, here uh, with me again, uh, a man who's been a blessing to my life uh, beyond what I can express. And I want him to just get into the importance, the importance of what the Word of God means uh, to your life and, and follow along with us today and then for you to have an own personal relationship uh, with the Word of God yourself. So brother, why don't you just go ahead and just talk to the people about the importance of what the Word of God means uh, for them to follow along with us in the Scripture, right? but also in their own personal life. Well, um, the Word of God states this. It says, man shall not live by bread alone, right. but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. God is always speaking to his people. Mm -hmm. He spoke to his man in the beginning. When he created man, he gave him a word. And all through the scriptures, God gives men words that they may live by and act by and to know his greatness by. And when you, when you go to a church or you go to a gathering and things are going forth and a man is coming forth with a word, it's so important that you follow along with him and that you read your word daily that God might begin to speak to you. We live in an in 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 age of grace where we have an open heaven and God wants to reveal himself to us. You know, the Bible says in the beginning, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was void without form and darkness upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, mm -hmm. God wants to move upon the face of the deep and the darkness right now in our lives. He wants to speak a word of life to us, speak a word of revelation to us, speak a word of love to us that might captivate our hearts and change the conditions in which we live in. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. Just like that word in the beginning, it changed the conditions. And the chaos that was there, the confusion that was there, out of that came light, out of that came order, out of that came purpose. Hmm. And God wants to do the same thing in our lives today. It's so important that we follow along and know, let God speak to our heart. Hmm. Because when you stand before God, you're not gonna have the preacher or your mama or anybody <laughs> else standing with you, right. okay, to give account of the deeds done in this body. As a believer, you're gonna have, the word is gonna judge you. And so it's good for you to know the word right now and to follow along. It's a, it's a necessity. Hmm. Um, a lot of times we think of different things that help us in our, in our growth and our faith walk with God. And one time I was, as I was meditating on it, I said, Lord, I can see that there are a lot of things that help us, but the word is the main ingredient. And the spirit of God spoke to me and he said, no, son, the word is the only ingredient. Because you don't have word in prayer, you really don't have a prayer. Right. Have a word in a praise, you really don't have a praise. Right. Have a, you, have a, you, have, you have a word in a song, you really don't have a song. Right. Have to have a word in everything that you do, mm. you know. Because the foundation of life is the word. Mm -hmm. The word was with God and the word was God. And the word revealed himself to mankind. The word became flesh. And that same word revealed himself to your heart. So it's so important that we um, individually go to God's word and begin to read the word and meditate and ask God to reveal himself to us. Mm -hmm. Because he will reveal himself to us by his word. Well, brother, that, that just, that, that, that sums it up. That sums up uh, a lot of the issues that people are dealing with uh, in their life is due to a lack of having a word. If, if Jesus said that man shall live by every word, life comes by the word. If, I, if I'm not experiencing life, I can trace it back to not having a word. Can I right. say that? Yes. And, um, and a lot of times the um, Lord wants to speak more to our life, but we don't have a word that he can build that foundation on. And that's why sometimes the Lord has to speak to us through circumstances, through conditions, because right. he wants to, but he wants to speak to you directly. He's a personal God mm -hmm. because Jesus died and shed his blood. You can have a personal relationship with God Almighty and reveal that word to your heart. Mm -hmm. He'll speak it to you that you might know. But mm -hmm. sometimes it's like a, like a child. Sometimes it has to be spoon fed. You have to give them, you know, whatever they need. Sometimes we don't grow up spiritually that we can receive a word from God. But as you continue to read, continue to meditate and continue to believe God. Mm. regardless of what the circumstances might say, regardless of what, what people might be telling you, begin to keep on believing the word of God. He will reveal himself to you. And you begin to speak that word, speak it, speaking the word out. Mm. Say that out loud. Mm. Speaking that word as you read it, God will begin to speak back to you. I'm mm. a witness. He'll mm. begin to speak by his spirit to you. And, and, and the word of God, the word of God is for us to enrich, to edify, to speak to our to speak to our spirits of what we need to be doing or should be doing in a particular situation or in a particular circumstance. Right. The word always moves into the spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay. A lot of times you don't receive a word because they ain't in the spirit. Right. The word moves where the spirit is. The spirit of God moved upon the face of the water, and God said that word spoken came into the spirit. Mm -hmm. If you want to receive a word, you got to be in the right spirit. You got to be right in the right condition. That's right. why it's so good to praise and to worship God. Right. Because you 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 get the conditions that are necessary for the word of God to breed and to grow. Mm -hmm. The word of God can be choked out. The, right. the word of God says in Matthew 13, and 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 and, and the, the word was choked and right. it became unfruitful. Right. It, it can happen to us. So we have to have a, a, breeding ground, a breeding ground for the word of God to flourish in our life. Mm. So uh, th that's why we always encourage you to follow along in the scripture. Follow us. And it's not just, you know, a, a lot of times I find myself quoting it a lot of times and I really don't want to do that. I want to I want to be able to take you to it and read now for time's sake. We may quote it, but, uh, you know, we'll we'll give you the reference or my producer put it up on the screen and let you know where you can find it. And for you to go back and meditate in yourself so that the word of God can 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 grow. on you talk about the importance of meditating in the word of God. OK, the word of God says in the first psalm, it says. Blessed is he that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. But his, his light is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water hmm. that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Um, the word of God is the source of our life. Hmm. We can't live, as it, it, that, that's in Matthew 4, chapter 4, verse 4. Hmm. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by the Every word, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That word, and the word is not just talking about the Bible, it's talking about the word coming alive in your heart. The rhema of God, mm. that word coming alive, God speaking a word to you in due season. Mm. It's necessary to have that for your growth and foundation. Wow. Just like a baby needs milk, 
A baby needs certain nourishments in it to grow up and develop. You as an adult need certain nourishment in you. If you don't have it, you're going to get weak and right. fall away. Right. That's why we need the word. Right. We can't live without the word of God. Mm -hmm. There's no faith without the word because faith is God's word going into your spirit. Mm -hmm. See, when God spoke in the beginning and that word went to the spirit, faith came. I, faith came. I like what you said. I like what you said uh, earlier. Um, you said when the spirit of God, when the word of God was spoken to the spirit of God, things changed. Right. That's powerful. Right. Powerful. It has to change. They'll change in your life. Yeah. You could have circumstances and conditions and you be wondering how you're going to get out this situation or where the money going to come from mm. or I'm sick and I, how, how, oh, how, I'll think. Oh. But if God speaks a word to you, if a rhema, if mm. a rhema, the word comes alive in your heart. Mm. But in order to get a rhema, you need some logos in there, right. something to breathe upon. Right. OK. And then God will speak or pull out a rhema out of that word. You might have been quoting or, or thinking about this word weeks ago, mm -hmm. or days ago, but God will bring that word back to you and mm -hmm. he'll speak that word in that situation. And as you speak the same thing, the Bible says having the same spirit of faith, mm -hmm. we can speak the same thing, life will come. Well, brother, I know how important that is because so many people are just looking for things to change in their life. So many people want their, want their marital situation to change. They want their career situation to change. They want their financial situation to change. They want to see change in their children. And that change that they're looking for is found via the Word of God. The Word of God. The Word of God is like this. The Word came. Jesus came. Not really for you have a, a changed life, but an exchange of life. Right. His life, which is in the right. word of God. He is the word of God. His life comes alive in you. Right. And those changes you talked about, they're going to change. They're, they're going to happen because you have an exchange of life. Mm -hmm. You exchange your life for his. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the Passover season. Yes. Where the, where, 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 where the lamb was slain right. and he died. Right. He died. Jesus died for our sins. He died that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Right. And as we take up our cross and as we see ourselves dead with him we can experience the life that he has right. that word will come alive in our heart and mm -hmm. it'll change the circumstance because the word is greater than any circumstance or condition that can come against you right you know man should not live by bread alone you can live off of God's word right right okay so now uh, uh, some great stuff the change that people are looking for is found within the exchange right. of life right. between Jesus Christ and the person who accepts him. Right. Am I saying that correctly? Right. You know, the, the, the exchange of life. In other words, you lay down your life. And in, in, in Romans chapter 6, it tells us that if you be planted together in the likeness of his death, you shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Right. He has a resurrected life. The word of God also tells us as he is so are we in this world. Right. We right. have this life already, but in order to um, have it activated in our life, the medium of exchange is faith. Mm -hmm. As faith is activated by hearing, mm -hmm. not heard by hearing. Mm -hmm. As you continue to hear the word, faith will develop, faith will first the blade, then the ear, then the full corner of the ear. Praise and whatever God. it is in your life that, that has to be overtaken, overcome, the word of the life that's in that word will overtake it. Because right. you're not you're exchanging that defeat for victory. You're exchanging that poverty for riches. You're exchanging that sickness for health. Because all of that is in the word of God. There's no defeat in the word of God. Praise God. Well, brother, listen, listen. You done said it so much, bro. I mean, it's, it gets going. And, uh, but, but look, we've talked about the importance of the word. It's important for you to understand this. That the change and that the word, I'm sorry, the word, the word speaks to every situation you face. There's a word for it. Man shall not live by bread alone, by, but by the only ingredient is the word of God. There has to be a word to go with every situation. The change, we talked about the change you're looking for. It's really not a change, but an exchange. Your change in your present circumstances is found in how you exchange Amen. his life for your life. Amen. You have to be willing to exchange. It's like, it's like, it's like people trying to lose weight. And they want to change the way they eat. It's really it's not a, it's not a diet that you're looking for, but it's a, a a change of life. Same way, if you want to see changes take place in your life, there has to be an exchange between yourself and Jesus Christ. The life He came so that the poor might be rich, the sick might be healed, and that the chaos might become peaceful. Amen. We have a few things we need to say to you. We'll be right back on the other side of the break. 
Hey, I pray that the first part of that message has been a blessing to you because I'm sure it blessed my life and I hope that it blessed your life. But listen, it's one thing for you to receive this word via television, uh, via the radio, but, but, but it's a whole nother thing for you to experience the presence of God in a service. And I want to just take this time to invite you to come out and be a part of our worship experience. We like to call it an experience because we come for one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to experience the presence of God. We have a service that goes on every Friday night that I know with all my heart that is going to be a blessing to the region. It's not a church thing. It's not a local thing, but it's, it's something for the entire region. We come to lift up the name of our God. We come to worship with all of our might and all of our strength. And whatever happens, happens. Whatever the Spirit of God desires to do in that service, we allow Him to do it. So I want to invite you to come on Friday nights. Prayer begins at 6 o'clock and the service begins promptly at 7. I guarantee you, you will be blessed. Now I'm, let's get back to some more of that word. Yes, we are back and, and some, some, I'm talking about some life changing things we already mentioned. I hope you had a chance to tune in. Um, uh, also, l let me mention that, that you know, we, we really uh, love coming to you uh, via via television, but but there's nothing like sitting in the in the in the presence of God as the Word of God is coming forth. So we want to invite you to the service. Um, you know our, our service times and things of that nature is up on the screen. We want to invite you to come out on Friday nights at uh, seven o'clock where we just worship God and then we testify of His goodness. On Sunday mornings at ten o'clock, uh, where we just we just worship, we praise God, we pray, we praise God, and, and the Spirit of God gives us the Word. And also on Tuesday nights at seven o'clock, we want to invite you to come out and sit and sit and be present with us. Uh, as we as we get into the word and we fellowship with Father, um, but we just went through a Passover season. Uh, the world names as Easter, um, but we, we we know it to be a season of of celebrating when the death angel passed over the nation of Israel. That is a picture of our new birth over here under the new covenant. And there's some scriptures that we went to that bring, brings out the the life and 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 the celebratory aspect of that life of Jesus Christ. Uh, we went to a scripture in John's gospel, and I, I believe it's important for us to see this because the beauty, as the brother was speaking earlier, the beauty of a father speaking a word of love to us. Listen, I don't care who you are. I don't care where you live. I don't care how tough you think you are or how strong you think you are. Everybody just want to be loved. Everybody. It's something man was created with, was, was to live knowing that he's beloved of the father. That just changes everything everything about mankind well there's a scripture that i really believe brings out brings out the expression of the love of god no, no better than what jesus went, went through on the cross and in john's gospel i love his rendition of it um the 19th chapter the 28th verse it says after this jesus knowing and when we talk about after this there was a custom that jesus uh, uh followed as far as appointing uh someone to take care of the the widowed mother or the mother uh, of, of the firstborn son be, not being around, I should say. Um, and Jesus did that by appointing John to watch over his mother. And he said, after this, after he had done this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Then he said, now there was set a vessel full of vinegar. And they filled the sponge with vinegar and put it on the hyssop, put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Praise okay, God. he gave up the ghost. And what we want to talk about is, is that word, that vinegar here deals with the bitterness and the sourness of sin. Vinegar means, uh, it speaks of a sourness uh, of life. And it, it, metaphorically, as we talk, there's, there's shadows, there's types, there's metaphors throughout the scripture. And the word vinegar brings out the fact that there's a, the sourness of what Jesus went through. This was a picture of that, brother. And I want you to just talk about, you know, what, what, what does this speak to us? What does this say to us as it pertains to uh, that whole scenario? Okay, as, you, as, as, it, as it reads, you know, um, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished, and he bowed his head and gave it the ghost. Mm -hmm. I believe it's speaking to our lives today. Mm -hmm. We really have to see it finished. Right. All right, in order to give up the ghost. Right. To give up our way of living. Mm -hmm. Okay, because the only life that God accepts is resurrection life. Amen. We have to see ourselves planted with him in death that we might blossom with him in resurrection life. Mm -hmm. I believe it speaks to the fact, a lot of times you have people talking about celebrating the resurrection, Easter right. and all that. The Bible never told you to celebrate <laughs> that. Right. <laughs> Jesus said, remember my, my death, death until I come. Right. People right. talk about living right and doing right and we celebrate the resurrection. How can you celebrate the resurrection? 
how can you have life with him if you ain't died with him? Right. Okay? Right. Until you died to self, you're not even in a position to celebrate a resurrection. Right. All right? Right. And matter of fact, as far as celebration, the resurrection is concerned, that should be celebrated every day. Amen. Okay? Amen. You remember right. his death. That's the, the emphasis on it. Right. It was a Passover season when the Passover lamb was slain. Now, also, uh, in, in, the, in that scenario, in the Old Testament, had a, 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 holi a holy day called first fruits. Right. But it was called the Passover season. Yes. Because God knows if you die right, <laughs> you'll, you'll live, live right. right. Yeah, worry about living right. Yeah, yeah. Let's okay? say that again, brother. Let's, let's not pass away. If you, if you die, die right, right you'll, you'll live, live right. right. Okay. And when we're talking and about dying, just this, this make that clear. We're, right. talking about, we're talking about giving up. Self, and then right, right. seeing that it is finished. See, Jesus right. was able to give up the ghost because he saw that the scriptures were fulfilled. Amen. It's finished. Oh, that's beautiful. We have to see it in our lives as being finished, as being a done deal. Right. We're healed. We're delivered. We're right. set free. Right. We can have what God said we can have. Right. And once we see it as finished, it enables us by faith to give up the ghost, right. to stop our own way of thinking, right. our own way of trying to get things sorted out. Right. Okay. But until you see that, you're in no position. I don't worry about celebrating his resurrection. Right. We're supposed to celebrate that every day. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if, not if, once a year. <laughs> right. And right. he never said nothing about that anyway. Right. He said, remember my death until I come. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But people don't want to die. Right. They don't want to die, and so they can't live. Mm. When you say people don't want to die, what we're saying is people don't want to give up their own way. Right. People want to do things their own way. They want right. to think for themselves. They want right. to speak for themselves. They right. want to defend themselves. Right. They want to. They act want to be themselves. independent. Right. Especially in this right. country, I think about independence. Well, we said we got a day where we celebrate our independence. Yeah, independence. Well, that's right. for the nation. I, I understand the sense of them being free from the mother country. Right. Understand? But but as far as a believer is concerned, your dependency always has to be on God. Right. You always have to go back to the tree of life that you can live. Right. What happened in the Garden of Eden, man celebrated his independence from God. Right. He chose for himself what he should do. Mm -hmm. Instead of following the word of God, mm -hmm. God gave him instruction not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He ate of it anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay then? And, but if you eat of the tree of life, you can live forever. Mm -hmm. These things don't have to happen to you. Right. But you have to see this. You have to see the work that Jesus accomplished as finished on the cross. Right. And don't go by what religion is saying. Religion say a lot of things, you know. Right. Right. It's, it's celebrated just once a year. You go and get knotted down and, and go to the you know, church house, wherever you go. But that, that, that ain't got nothing to do with the word of God. Right. Ain't nothing to do with the God. You live that life every day. Right. You celebrate. You, you, the resurrection is celebrated as you live his life. Right. That's when it comes. Forth. But you can't live God. his life until first you died with him. If you haven't died with him, you can't reign with him. Mm. It's an impossibility. Well, brother, that, 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 I mean, that is so, that is so rich that, that in order for us to live, we should be living resurrection. Right. On Every a day. daily basis. Every but day. in order to live resurrection. I die daily, the yeah. Apostle Paul said. Oh, okay. I die daily. You got to put down your will. Give God the first fruit of your lips as you wake up in the morning and you pray and cry out to God that the spirit of God might empower you to live the life that God has given. Because, again, the word of God comes into the spirit of God. Ain't no spirit there. Ain't no word going to be there. I'm saying you got wow. nothing but letter. The letter right. killer. Right. A lot of people take this Bible and got nothing but letter on it. Right. But the spirit giveth life. God is alive. His word is alive. And you can be alive also in him if you put that word in the spirit. Praise but you have God. to. Put a breeding ground for that spirit. That's why you have to praise and to worship God and lift up his holy name. Mm. And God will have an exchange of life. He'll exchange your life as you give it the ghost and his life will come in you. Praise as Apostle God. Paul said, the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the son of God. Amen. That's the life he lived. He didn't live his own life. Mm -hmm. He died to himself mm -hmm. and he died daily and he lived to God. And we also can die to ourselves and live to God. Now, now the process, okay, we talk, we're, talking about, we're talking about living in that finished work, right. living in that finished work. We were talking the other day in the service about um, right believing right. will equate to right living. Right, you have to believe right. And see, that's why the exchange, the medium of exchange is God's word. Mm -hmm. God, is Bible, the word of God says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's the battleground of mind. Right. Because as you get the word in you, see, w your thoughts are comprised of words. Mm -hmm. And as you get the word in you, you'll start thinking like God thinks. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. Religion don't buy it, brother. Well, religion will tell religion. you, yeah, you yeah. can. So you're telling me you can think like God. That's right, what right, definitely. Right, right. What now, what the word says, having the same spirit of faith. Right. The word of God said, have the well, same ain't gonna, religion ain't going to let faith. that fly. Let well, this mind be in you, which is also the in Christ Jesus. But the doctors and the bishops and the Lord, they're going to tell you. Right, right, right. 
Right. Forget about that. Man mm. should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out the mouth but the, of God. But the bishop said it, bro. It, it, it don't make any difference. The Bible, Paul said, the angel from heaven come and say it. <laughs> Let them be a curse. They don't pay no attention to foolishness, okay? Let, listen what God is speaking to your heart, because when you stand before God, the bishop ain't going to be next to you. The pope ain't going to be next to you. Right. Um, your pastor ain't going to be next to you. Um, Brother Allen ain't going to be next to you, okay then? You're right. going to stand there, and the only thing you're going to have to stand on is God's word. So we have to go by what God's word is saying and forget about the religious traditions. Okay, so you were saying, I just wanted to throw that in. Right. So you were saying that we can think. We can think. If we have our minds transformed and get that word, God has put his spirit in us. The mm -hmm. Bible says the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by his Holy Spirit, which he's given unto us. Mm -hmm. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Mm -hmm. Now you got to feed him some word. Right. And you're transformed by the renewing of our minds. We can begin to think in accord with the word of God to do the things God would have us to do. See, if you if you begin to speak right, it'll change and get that word in, it'll change the way you think. Mm. It'll change the way you think or change the way you act. Mm -hmm. So you begin to think, speak, and act like God himself, like God would have you to act. Mm. Have the God type of faith. Because you have his word mm -hmm. and his spirit living in you. Mm -hmm. And that's what faith is. Well, Peter said this. Peter said, I perceive that God is no respected person, but he that worketh righteousness. Right. Now, would you say that's, that process is a part of us working the righteousness that's been imparted unto us? Right. The righteousness is believing the word of God. The right. Bible said Abraham believed God and it was in, in, in accounted to him for righteousness. It put on your account as you believe the word of God, as you believe the word of God, the word of God comes alive in you. Mm. And now the life you now live, you're living by the word of God that's in you, the faith of the son of God, mm. because Jesus believed the word of God. Yes. He lived this life by faith. Right. His life is well, wait, wait, wait. Folks, most folks don't understand that now. Most folks think he knew everything no, when he was no, here. Folks no, no, think no. he had all power. We, could, we go in the scripture, we say he grew in the wisdom, he grew right. in knowledge and the grace of God. And Luke, uh, uh, and Luke, I believe it's the end of the first Luke chapter. Luke is, yeah. is in there twice. In yeah, Luke twice. Yeah, I think yeah. it's the second chapter, somewhere around in the end of the but chapter. But Jesus lived by faith. He lived he by faith. He went to the cross by faith. He, 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 he had saw, a word. He saw himself in the word. And yeah. we have to see ourselves in the word of God. Yeah, that's okay? good. As we see ourselves in the word, we're able to live by faith. But you can't live by faith just assuming it right. and just going by what somebody <laughs> else said. Right. You got to work that word in you. Right. As the word of God says, working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. It's him that worketh in you, the willing to do of his good pleasure. You join forces with God. Well, brother, listen, listen, we only got one minute. Praise I would say, say a quick prayer to empower people to believe God like we're supposed to believe God. Okay, Heavenly Father, uh, we come to you, Father, asking you to yes, move upon do, the Lord. hearts and the souls of people in the audience, Father. Mm -hmm. yes, that Father. you bless their minds, the eyes of their understanding to be enlightened. Yes, Lord. That they may know what is the hope of thy calling upon their lives, O oh God. Yes. That you bless them to see the light of thy word, O oh Father. That they're able to walk in that word, O oh Father, and to do the things as you said we'd be able to do. For you declared in your word the works that you do, that you did, O oh God, that we shall do also. Yes, greater Lord. works than these can we do, Father. As with the word of God is revealed as we go from faith to faith, from strength to strength, yes, from Lord. glory to glory, that thy name might be glorified in the earth in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I, listen, listen, we believe strongly in binding and we bind that spirit of darkness, the root yes. of the darkness glory that's, that's, trying, to, that's trying to, just trying to keep that revelation of Jesus Christ coming to your mind. We bind it in Jesus' name and glory we allow you to God. receive that word of life thank in you, Jesus. Jesus' wonderful name. Hey, I thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Listen, we love you. We believe in you. We believe God's best for you. We believe that the goodness of God will manifest in your life right here in the Buffalo, New York. And we declare that Buffalo, your sins are forgiven. You are blessed. You are favored and you are beloved. God bless you. We'll see you next week right here from Perfecting Kingdom Living. I'm healed by the power of His Word. Thank you for joining us today. We expect that you heard something that will help bring you closer to living out your kingdom purpose. If this message has been a blessing to you, please contact us and share your thoughts with us. Join us again next week for Perfecting Kingdom Living.